Going. Today, I picked up a bunch of tea from from the vending machine back there, and we're going to have a chance to try some of these teas. Uh, each one of them is quite different. There's nobody really around here. Each one is really quite different, and uh, um, I'm kind of excited to do this because somebody here. I'm kind of excited to do this because I know that from the vending machines, each green tea is quite different. Each one has, I don't know, from a vending machine, there's different colors, different varieties, different tastes. And I thought it'd be interesting just to run through all of them today. So I've set them down here, right here next to me. And we're gonna take a look at some of the colors of them as well as um, what does it taste like? Now, the first one here is the uh, Oi Ocha. Do you see this one here? This is actually, from Itawen, and they call it the Guinness Book of World Record holder because it sells the most rokucha, which is green tea, in the world. So I guess they put, they're really using that Guinness Book of World Records. So this is the baseline. This is the baseline for uh, green tea. So let's try this right here. I think they're gonna do construction over there. I picked a, a, a pretty bad spot. Now, green tea does have a, a a kind of a yellow color to it. It's not actually green like matcha. The difference between rokucha and matcha is that matcha is actually ground up uh, tea. So it's powder form. This comes from the actual leaves that have been steamed and then rolled. So, um, or kneaded, I guess is the proper word. Um, this is what it looks like here, the color. And I, I, want, uh, I wanted to do this, I wanted to do this outside because what's going on here I wanted to do this outside so you, the sunlight would help you get the uh, the the true color of it through the glass here it's really good it's just slightly there's a slight bitterness to it but I can tell that they don't use 100 degree boiling water they use more of a 50 to 60 degree uh, water uh, because the water temperature controls the amount of caffeine and catechin inside of it. Catechin is um, this really great chemical inside, compound inside of green tea that's released when you add hot water. And this is the one that gets rid of the free radicals and also helps you with beauty. I need a little bit of that these days. But um, this one is really good. This is the baseline. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that here. It's just a little bit bitter and slightly sweet. So it's a pretty good balance here. Oh, they started construction over there. I picked, the reason why I didn't go to the riverside is because um, there's a little bit of wind and this I thought would block it down. I, I'm, I'm really bad with picking the areas. Okay, this one is also by Itoen. Yeah, this is the same company and the same brand, except that this one is called uh, Ichicha. And I guess you would say that it, it 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 claims to reduce body fat, all right? And the price was actually the same as the one I just showed you. This you can also find in the vending machines. The reason why it might not be as popular is because it's a little bit more bitter, all right? But the reason why is I believe, and the color is different, they use a higher temperature to boil it, and the katekin amount is six, 960 milligrams. Do you see that, all right? And then in this one here, the baseline regular Ito N1, the katekin in here is is um, 40 milligrams. Do you see right there, 40 milligrams and 960 milligrams. So this one for health wise, I can see why this is so much better for you. So I'm gonna guess that this one's going to be a lot, this one's going to be a lot uh, darker than than the oicha right here, the baseline. Ah, yeah. There's a little bit more color to it. Do you see this? I guess it's harder to see. This is the normal oicha, and this is the one that, that has been, I believe, um, brewed at a higher temperature. It's a bit darker, but this one has has more of the katekin and it also has more caffeine in it. So let's try these two. Oh yeah, 
This one is definitely a lot more bitter than this one. This one has a sweeter taste. This one has a bitter taste, but in terms of health and in terms of caffeine, this one will keep you awake and make you look more beautiful because the catechine and caffeine and green tea kind of have similar impacts. Um, you know, if, you're not, if you don't want to drink any caffeine, probably don't drink any green tea or brew it with cold water or cooler water. This does not release the caffeines or use what we call um, um, hojicha, which has been roasted. So that gets rid of a lot of the, a lot of the um, uh, caffeine. Maybe there's a trace amount of it. All right, so I can't really see too much of a difference in color, right? But I think we're going to see some differences in color coming soon. So th for me, this this bold one is a lot is a lot better. Same price, just it's more bitter. And if you've never had green tea from a vending machine, you're probably not gonna wanna get this one. First, build into it. Because I gotta tell you, the first time I tried green tea, I did not like it. I remember coming here 23 years ago, going to a vending machine and go, what? It's, I, I got a green tea out of a vending machine and it was sweet, it wasn't sweetened, it was just full all out bitter. How did I pick the absolute worst spot to do this? They just came right now, the construction. Anyways, uh, this one is unsweetened, just like the other one. A little bit, a little bit uh, too bitter for most people, but I can tell you this one here is a little bit better sweetened. It has more, uh, probably gonna like this more if this is your first time having it. Uh-oh. I think they, they want my ch the chair back. Next up is Namacha. This was, this is, sometimes the live streams, they kind of have a life of their own. I guess they're, they're playing some sort of game or something. This one is called Namacha, and Namacha is made by Kirin Beverages. Uh, Kirin, of course, is famous for the, the Kirin beer, but this also, um, there's also, I was reading the back of the, the label, it doesn't tell you a lot about the amount of katakins or caffeine in it. All it does say is that it's 100% from Japan, all right? So, um, <laughs> and this is part of the problem. This is, and they just left their bags there, look. They just left their bags there on the chair and walked away. That's weird. All right, um, Namacha was one of the first ones that I had 20 some years ago. Um, it wasn't actually Ito one, it was this one. And I actually was very partial to this, uh, to this brand and was, was buying a lot. And then I found that Ito and more to my liking. There's just a little bit more, a little bit more um, sweetness to it that I liked, a natural sweetness. So this is Namacha. Nama means raw. And I can't really figure out what the difference is. They don't write a lot on the label, but apparently they use raw leaves, meaning unprocessed at no processing whatsoever. Oh, now you can see the difference. Wow. This, this reminds me of beer. It's cloudy. Do you see that? Wow. So this Namacha is actually cloudy, and it looks like it's got some of the, like, I don't know, like they put in some of the um, juice of the tea leaves or something. It's more than just brewed, unfiltered maybe, I guess is the word. It reminds me of beer, you know, you find some unfiltered beers. This would be the unfiltered one and this would be the filtered one. Let's try to see which one is better. And this is the normal, this is the normal uh, Ito and Oicha. Here we go. Kirin Namacha. I like them both. Actually, I can't taste much of a difference. I can't taste too much of a difference between the two. This one is not as bitter. Um, this one has a slight bitterness to it. This one is not as bitter. Of course, there's a slight bitterness. This one's even less so. Has more of a, just a, a refreshing taste to it. 
And I think with the bitterness, if you're not used to it, and that's most in, most people in North America are not used to the bitterness of green tea. It's actually people are like, Blah, what is this stuff? Give me some honey. You can get used to it. And when you do, um, it's really refreshing. You, you kind of, just like you do with the sweetness, you can get addicted almost to bitterness, except in people. But this one is quite good. And this is why I also liked, I also liked um, this tea when I first came to Japan. So the Namacha is definitely um, high on my list uh, to, to recommend to people. I gotta drink this, I only have two glasses. Next up, I'm gonna be looking at this one here. And you've got background music from, background music from construction about 20 meters away. <laughs> this is uh, Ayataka. Ayataka is made by uh, Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola has been brewing tea for, for a long time. This might come to a shock to some people in North America, of course, in, the, in Atlanta, where uh, Coca-Cola is uh, headquartered. In Japan, their best-selling product is not actually Coca-Cola. It's, it's the teas that they sell from the vending machines and Georgia coffee. They also make canned coffee in the Coca-Cola vending machines. Again, you can see here the Coca-Cola logo on the, on the back of it here. Um, this one doesn't actually tell you any of the information about this tea, except that it's authentic. It looks authentic, and I like the shape of the bottle, but really, I can't, I can't actually get any information on this tea. Is it, it's just Rokucha. And all the green teas that I'm showing you here, they're loaded in vitamin C as well, all right? It's not just caffeine and catechins and amino acids. There's lots of things that give it a lot of health benefits. And I, I have a video that I just released. If you, if you don't know about the new Only in Japan channel, um, I'll put a, I think I put a link in the description here. Go check that out. I traveled to Fuji City, to Shizuoka Prefecture, and I talked with some tea masters about the taste and the health benefits of green tea. It's an amazing edited video with some fantastic drone shots of the Fuji tea plantations around Mount Fuji. So you, you definitely gonna wanna check that out. I released that yesterday. Um, and if you have any questions, you can hit me up on the Discord server because I'll be looking at that tonight. Now, um, Arsenic, thank you for welcoming. Welcome to the Travelers, Arsenic 101 and the Beatles. Long time no see, John. Looking forward to these as not normally a big fan of these drinks. I under, I've, I've been there too, you know. Uh, Air to the Ron, Kanpai. Looks good and looks cold. It's actually a pretty warm day here in Tokyo. Thanks for the support, guys. And Surprise Cat Tea is also a new member. Thanks for that. All right, let's... <laughs> they come back. All right, let's try this Ayataka. And we're going to compare it again with the base... Our base tea, if you're if you're joining us for this episode, is this one. This is the Ito and Oicha, the Guinness Book of World Record holder, the most green tea sold in a pet bottle. I didn't know that you can get a Guinness Book for anything here. All right, Ayataka from Coca Cola. Let's see this one here. Interesting. So this one looks. This one looks cloudier than the Itoen version, but it's not as cloudy as Namacha from Kirin, all right? That is interesting. So it is definitely cloudy. Um, I'm not sure about the process. This is something I'm gonna ask next time I go for part two in the video. Um, again, like the edited video I just uploaded will have a second part to it. But let's, let's give this a try now. This is uh, from Coca-Cola. Wow, the bitterness is so much more subdued in this. Of course, all of these are unsweetened teas, but you know, I this is the first time in the 23 years I've been living here that I've actually done this, where I've compared the the tea tastes to all all to other ones. This one definitely is the smoothest. Wow. Almost, almost. I would. I don't want to say no bitterness, but it's definitely um, a lot more subdued, um, and that cloudiness to this this one definitely has. There's something in it, but I can't tell. It's just. This is a good balance between the sweetness and the bitterness, but both sweetness and bitterness are at a very low level. In order to do that, they have to brew these at lower temperatures. Again, 
if you brew your green tea at over 70 degrees Celsius, which is what, 100 and, 150 degrees Fahrenheit maybe? Um, boiling water, of course, is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. If you boil it at a, at a lower temperature, you, you reduce the bitterness because the caffeine and, and catechins don't come out. All right, they kind of stay inside the leaves, but you kind of want that to come out a little bit because um, it has a lot of health benefits. Yeah, and this is the baseline, um, baseline oicha from Itoen. There's a definite bitterness here. John Wakamatsu is in the house. How you doing, John? All right, let's try the last one here. This one is really interesting. This is from Kyoto. All right, it's actually from Suntory Beverages. This is green tea, and it says here with matcha. And you can see, again, the color is is more along the lines of namacha. It's, it looks like it's unfiltered. Um, again, this is a reason why people might find value in green tea. If it's filtered and too clear, people might not see the same value in it. Um, again, it says it's green color, and it has a, the, the taste of green tea in here. So it's, it's all... These all, all vending machine teas are all natural from um, grown here in Japan. So nothing is imported. It says here that there's um, katakin 8 to 29 milligrams here on the bottom there. And of course loaded with vitamin C. Um, and just 0 0.02 grams of salt, which I don't understand. Unless it's, maybe they do that to make you thirstier, so then you drink more of it. I guess that would be a reason to do that. I don't know. But this one has matcha inside of it. So let's let's see how this this tastes. In order to empty the glass, I have to empty the glass. Oh wow. Wow. Now matcha is I learned in Shizuoka, they don't actually make a lot of matcha, if at all. Um, they, mostly, they mostly grow sencha. Sencha is the first flush of a type of green tea that's in the sun. Gyocha is, is more an uji in Kyoto, and it's covered, meaning it doesn't have direct sunlight, so it produces a different taste. But it's the same bush, it's the same tea plant, okay? Um, so in Kyoto, they have the, the gyocha, and that's the one that they grind into matcha. So this is all from Kyoto. This is not from Shizuoka. So I'm kind of interested to see how this one tastes here. Again, this one is not as filtered as the other green teas. Very interesting. I think if I compare this to um, namacha, I wonder how much more, how much more unfiltered they are. So that might be a future live stream. So this is the, the baseline Itoen and the, 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 um, the last one from uh, Kyoto. Let's give this a try. There's a different kind of a bitterness to this one. That's really interesting. I don't know. I probably, I don't like this one as much. I don't like this one as much. I don't know why. It doesn't taste as clear. It doesn't, it doesn't have that, that clear green tea taste to it. This one has, and it leaves a texture in my mouth. And it's, I'm, I'm making a face, but it doesn't mean it's bad. Just like I can feel it's leaving something behind and maybe that's from the powder from the matcha. Now, matcha is a key word that makes everybody kind of excited because you get that in ice cream, matcha. You know, it's, it's like this, um, it's more famous maybe than ocha or rokucha, which is the, the name for green tea. Matcha is a brand in itself. So I could see why they would add matcha to sell this. But I also noticed, uh, so all the pet bottles are not 500 milliliters, but they're actually 525 milliliters. I think that that was really interesting. Uh, I'm not a big fan of this one. Let's compare it to... No, I, I definitely like the Ito in one. All right, I'm ready to give you... I'm, I'm ready to give you a, uh, um, a final diagnosis of... What are they doing? I don't 
don't know. Not any student. All right, the cloudiest one might have been this Namacha. So let's see, let's see how they compare here. Namacha and uh, Iemon. You can see Namacha just is a little bit greener or yellow greener. So this one has the matcha in it and this one is Namacha by Kinin. So you can see this one probably is louder and darker and might have more natural goodness to it. I'm not really sure. Yeah. All right, I'm ready to make my final diagnosis here. This is kind of fun. I didn't know. I didn't know. Um, I didn't know that I would be so impacted by this green tea episode. Uh, that I just uploaded. A big shout out, by the way, to my friend Dean Newcomb, who uploaded a video. Uh, I'm actually, I collaborated with Dean, who's, whose channel is called Runaway Japan. And no, he's not son of, son of Duke Newcomb. He's Dean Newcomb. He could, maybe he is, I don't know. All right, to be honest with you, I don't know. Um, but that, that episode really impacted me. And you might wanna check that out on, I put a link in the description of this video. and. And check out Dean's Dean's episode. I think he only had like 900 views, which is a travesty. Um, it's pretty interesting. And a behind-the-scenes look at that episode that I made in Fuji City. He was also filming something, and you can see how much luggage I also carry at the end of the video. I kind of travel with a lot of camera bags. So here's my final pro diagnosis here, prognosis. So I'm gonna put put the green tea here in a lineup here. So I, I, I'm gonna pick it from from last to first. All right. And it doesn't mean that they're bad here. So this one, which is Iemon from um, Suntory, this would be fifth place, okay? I should put it this way, fifth place. Um, there's no drum roll because, actually, we should have some construction. That would be a good drum roll here. Um, and I'm going to get some of your questions at, at the end of this. Um, next up for me would be this Ayataka. Ayataka from Coca-Cola. That's me. Hold on, I can push this. I can put this down here. There we go. Ayataka from Coca-Cola would be in uh, fourth place, which doesn't mean it's bad. It's just, it's got some pretty steep competition. Um, in third place, I'm going to put, I'm going to put this one here, which is the um, Koicha, which is part of the Itoen brand here uh, of Oicha. This Koicha is in third place, and I'm going just by on, on taste alone. Next up is Namacha, all right? And uh, Oicha here is the winner for me. So these are the five bottles here. And, um, you know, it's interesting because the best and healthiest one for you is this one. And this one is the same price in all the vending machines. All they did that was different is just, I, I believe, just boiled it with, with hotter water. All right. And this created more catechins, which is what you want. Um, to decrease free radicals in your body, which are anti-aging. And it says it has double the amount of catechins that you need than this one. So, I mean, you're paying for more. What is interesting to me is that these other teas, Kirin's Namacha, Ayataka, and uh, Iemon, do not actually tell you how much catechin is in it. They give you like an estimate between 9 and 29 or something. That's not good. <laughs> I want that information written on the label. I want to know exactly what I'm drinking. So possibly they could add more of the, more of the nutritional value, but this is just the reason why, uh, the reason why I wanted to do this episode. And I'll take some of your questions. The important thing to me was when I was in Fuku, uh, in, um, Shizuoka in Fuji city, they, a, a lot of the tea masters told me that people are starting to become disconnected with the tea culture in Japan. I'm talking about Japanese. Younger Japanese kids only know ocha, green tea, from the vending machines. And that part of the culture is starting to get lost a little bit. So a lot of the tea masters are making an, an effort. They didn't have to do this in the past. Making an effort to go to schools and travel around Japan to teach kids about the culture of green tea how to make it, what the temperature does, some of the stuff that's in it that's good for you. Because coffee, if there's a battle, coffee is fighting pretty hard here in Japan. 
So I thought it was pretty important for me to make this episode in, in uh, Shizuoka um, uh, last month. And that, again, you can, you can upload and see it. Uh, Heir to the Raw, Duke Nukem. I love the random comments like John Wall Houston. <laughs> that was the other day when setting up the... Yeah, you know, Heir to the Ron, there's some stuff up here. I don't know where it comes from. Natasha uh, Zidanoff, thank you so much. It's nice to see Pearman. Jennifer French is here. It's always great. Food Loaf, I never thought you'd do bungee jumping. All right, it's kind of the mysterious ending of the main channel episode. Go, go check that out. I have, a, I have a couple of things that I wanted to share with you. And John Wakamatsu and Jeff Ang, thank you so much. Again, Michael Sassano, I love your tea adventure with Dean. Always wondered how tea culture cult was cultivated and produced in Japan. Looking forward to part two. Do they make sweetened tea? That's a good question. Um, that's a good question, Michael. And the answer is they do, but it's not green tea. Because I don't think that people would, would that would resonate, that wouldn't resonate very well with um, um, Japanese. The, the, see, the sweetness is something that we kind of look forward to and savor. But for Japanese, it's the opposite. Actually, sweetness is not something that they look for in a drink all the time. It's like dessert. And that's why there's a vending machine. Just There's a couple of vending machines just over there. I'll take, I'll take you to a vending machine at the end of this live stream. Um, the Coca-Cola sometimes comes in, in cans that are only six ounces. The reason why is it's too sweet for Japanese. They prefer bitter. So there's not a lot of sweetened teas because actually they just don't sell that well. The sweeter a product is, the more they see it as dessert and they don't like it. Just like I think Westerners don't like the bitterness of the tea, the Japanese don't like the sweetness of the drinks. It's too sweet. So uh, this is one of the things that I discussed with some of the tea masters up in, in uh, Shizuoka as well. Bitterness and sweetness are two tastes that are that we should value But for some reason maybe it's because of when we we're a kid the bitterness is just too strong and our palates are not used to it However after living here for 20 some years my palate is now adjusted to the bitterness and I actually look forward to, I actually love it. It's just an acquired taste um, So the, the first first couple of times that you try green tea you, you might not like it w um, without sweetener I'm gonna tell you, just try to drink it without the sweetener for a little bit. Give your mind a few days, and then you're gonna start to like the bitterness of it. It's just something that's, that you're just not used to, like lima beans and broccoli and stuff like this, right? It's, it's, it's kind of, it, I, I wasn't a big broccoli fan either, and then I, I really like it now the more I ate it. There's a beautiful poetry in bitterness. Tortoro poco, exactly. I think that bitterness is one of these flavors, and if you start to release, it also, I think it has an, plays an impact on your mind Different tastes, and this is what I love about Japanese cuisine, different tastes release different thoughts and different feelings. So green tea releases a different feeling. And it's a different bitterness than coffee. It's a different bitterness um, than, um, you know, other bitter foods that I've had. But I, I, I just think if you, if you get a chance to drink green tea, try it bitter and try to fight through that initial reaction like, blah, this is gross. Keep drinking it, not just because it's good for you. That bitterness, you will find some sort of happiness inside of that. And it will it'll expand your palate, all right? And this will open up new foods to you and you'll have a greater appreciation of it if you can appreciate the bitterness of something. And you won't give those, those, um, those sugar and high fructose corn syrup uh, uh, corporations, you won't give them your business and that's a good thing. Although I, by buying Coca-Cola, I kind of just did. <laughs> Spike021, didn't love green tea much till visiting the first time. Hot bottles of green tea are especially nice in the conveni in the cold mornings. Yes! Yes! You know, um, when I'm waiting for trains, and this is when I was, I was riding the Seishun Jackji Cape, which is a local train pass to get around here. In the winter, it is so chilly, and uh, you always want to get an early start waiting on the train platforms out in the countryside. I would buy the cans of hot tea or, or um, milk tea and I would put it in my pocket and I'd buy one or two to stay warm and then I would drink it on the train but it's kind of a little little bit of a savior in some of the coldest days especially up in Hokkaido buying the hot teas from the vending machines is a, a definitely um, definitely the way to go it's it's like kind of expensive for a heater but Nausha like it's a couple of bucks Nausha thank you welcome new traveler and, and uh, Jean Jay welcome another new traveler 
By the way, if you become an insider, I'm gonna be doing after this, in a place that's not so loud. Um, I got two, kit two, two new Kit Kat flavors. This one is called uh, Ume, and this one is um, Machak Tiramisu. And I'm gonna be doing an, a special secret insider live stream right after this one, um, about five minutes after I find a better spot. And I think the construction is going away. I timed this so bad. This one is really interesting. So um, you might wanna check out and become an insider. Patreon Postcard Club members and up will also get a chance to take a look at that so you don't, you don't have to do that if you're a Postcard Club member. Speaking of which, I do have I do have a postcard. This is going to Ron in Houston, Texas. So thank you, Ron. I'm gonna be put, putting this in the mailbox. This is this month's postcard, and um, I put food stamps on the back of it. Um, every month I do on, the, on Patreon a postcard club, uh, sending a new image from, um, from Japan. This is a sushi episode that'll be coming uh, in early February. So I'm pretty excited about that. It's, it's from uh, the chef who did micro sushi with me uh, a couple of years ago. I went back there and, and filmed another one of his uh, very uh, special food arts. Very, very, uh, very creative. That's Yuki-san from Takasago Sushi. So a very, very creative chef. Um, any questions? Let's see if we can go through, through this. Brandan Brandania is here. Welcome, Brandania. It's good to see you. Food stamps made something completely different here. Stephen <laughs> didn't think about that. In Japan, a uh, food stamp is a stamp with food on it, and there's a lot of them because Japanese cuisine is so good. I didn't get that. The mystery Kit Kat, I did not get that. Um, for me, the mystery Kit Kat will always be the age-barreled whiskey Kit Kats, which I just can't get a hold of. Is there a fermented version um, of what? of tea when you when you kind of put enzymes in the tea that's when you get oolong cha and and black teas and china chinese you know a lot of the tea i believe comes from the same team from the same bush and i mean there might be some different varieties in there but they add an enzyme in china that that changes the taste of it so you get all sorts of different kinds of teas that open up they open up your palate which is so interesting how diverse that the tea bush is right it's so diverse um Waste Future writes, love you, John Dobb. Thank you, Waste Future. That's a good name. Is there expensive tea? I do appreciate it, Mr. Waste. Is there, is there expensive tea? Um, this is a good question, okay. So when I was in Shizuoka, um, I did ask about the price, and this is part of the next, next episode of uh, Green Tea. There's a whole world of this. I, I only scratched the surface. Um, the, the Prices of the tea have a little bit to do with the branding, but also with the tea themselves. And um, um, Watanabe-san, in the video that with the link, the description is a, the video, a description, link to the video in the, this video's description. Watanabe-san is also a chashi, which is a, a tea master, fifth generation tea master. And he's one of the people in Fuji City who, who blends tea, but he tastes it and his palate blends the different kinds of teas. Um, he, he's got a very fine taste. And one of the things that he told me, among a lot of stuff, I, I, I wanna make sure I get this right, so I'll put it in the, in the next video. Um, the more expensive teas, the, the masters have found, they, like each flush has, has some power to it. And it's that, that like balance between bitterness and sweetness when brewed at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which I believe is 158 degrees, sorry, 70 degrees Celsius, which is 158 degrees Fahrenheit, I believe. When you brew it at that, at that um, baseline temperature, you get a good combination of sweetness and bitterness. The amino acids create the sweetness in green tea, and the catechins and caffeine create the bitterness. So you, you get both of those. You don't kill the amino acids, uh, the taste that comes from it, and you also pre um, bring out some of the catechins. The hotter the water is, the more the catechins come out and the more bitter the tea becomes. But the more expensive teas come from more prestigious places and also have um, that flush just has a very good balance to it. And again, I think in Uji, and the location also does matter, different temperatures the same as wine. Honda-san, who in that video, 
this is such an excellent question. Um, Honda-san in the video told me that um, different regions of Japan, because of the weather, also have different tastes too. So there's a subtleness to it. And he compared, and I didn't edit this into, I edited this out of the video because it would have been like a 50 minute video. He compared uh, green tea to like wine. There's Pinot, Pinot Noir. I mean, these are different kinds of grapes, but it also really depends on the region. There's France, there's Spain, there's, actually, I like wine from Romania and uh, an unknown region. So you get different kinds of flavors based on the different kinds of weather, just like with the wine in, in Japan. We have a different, different water, different grapes, different weather. And this all also plays a part in the value of it. Shizuoka makes the majority of green tea, especially sencha, in Japan. So, um, uh, but there are some really pricey uh, teas in there. Also, the blends of the tea do make it more expensive, okay? So you won't get straight sencha, you'll get blended tea. But in, I have to tell you this, okay? In general, I don't buy the cheapest one. I'll pick something like around, I don't know, for 250 grams, maybe a thousand yen, 800 to a thousand yen, and that'll last quite a long time. Um, a little bit long, more, longer than a kilogram of, of coffee for me, which is what, like two and a half pounds. So uh, somewhere between 800 and 1,000 yen would be pretty good price to, to get for 250 grams of it. And you can probably stretch that out for a long time. Um, there's a lot of tea in there. Um, but cheaper teas are okay too. Just the taste of it is controlled more by the temperature. And, if you, if, and knowing that should give you a leg up on other tea, tea people because it shocked me to, to figure this out. And it, I think it shocked some people who have been drinking tea for, for decades. So what is the most expensive that you've bought? Um, actually, this, for pet bottle, um, Itoen has, I think, an even higher grade. This is the healthiest tea for your body, this one here. Itoen has an even higher grade, and they can go up to about $2 for a pet bottle. But in general, I've never, I, that I know of, I've never tried really super premium, high-grade, expensive tea yet. And that's something that I'm going to be doing in the next episode. Um, really kind of expand on what we built in the first episode for this tea. Um, and tea is very much like coffee in the way that, um, like there's different brews, there's different ways, there's like nitro brewing coffee, there's cold brewing coffee. Again, tea, is, it, it's, it's not as sexy and marketable as coffee. Coffee just has that appeal, right? I don't know why. Coffee houses, you don't get the same kind of like love you get when you say the word tea houses, right? It just sounds kind of boring. People don't want to relax. They want to like be like, like um, energy drinked out now, and they want the caffeine. But you can actually, if you if you brew your sencha at a hundred degrees at boiling water, you will get a heck of a lot of caffeine out of that. Okay, all right. You can make your own sports drink. And what was surprising to me was that a green tea actually can be a thirst quencher. They don't put in salt. Coca Cola, and this was really shocking to me. Coca-Cola puts in a lot of salt to make you even more thirsty so you drink more Coca-Cola. I just found this out. And they use sugar to mask the saltiness of it. So your body is actually craving more Coca-Cola because you're, you're, you're craving the salts. The salt is making you thirsty in Coca-Cola. It was shocking to me to figure this out. Tea doesn't really have a lot of salt and I was surprised that Suntory put some sodium. There's sodium in their tea. But I don't think Itoen has any sodium, do they? And again, like tea makers would do that to make you to make you more thirsty but maybe to add a little bit of minerals in it because salt does have some minerals in it i don't i don't see in this one and this is the baseline that i used for today this doesn't say it has any salt no yeah no salt in this one that i can see oh no there is there's a trace amount of salt so i don't know why you can see it says here sodium a table salt, 0 0.03 grams. I don't know why um, there's any sodium in this at all. But drink makers might add it in there because it makes you thirsty to drink more. But I think if you're drinking this as a replenishment, that's not a lot. E electrolytes maybe, that's not a lot. But if you're an athlete and you're, and you're um, active, you might want to have a little bit of salt anyway. So it's not a bad thing to have have the salt and maybe to curb some of the bitterness perhaps but then again 
Japanese love that bitterness. So for this market, sometimes being extra bitter has its value. I picked again the worst spot for doing live streams. I do apologize uh, for this. It does help you hydrate too, Nosh. So maybe it's a very good balance. Again, like I do think you should read the labels. And if you do come to Japan and you're interested in this, try buying a bunch of green teas and find the green tea that that um, works best for you. Again, like what the way I taste it is probably going to be different from the way you taste the things. This is just part of the experience. And drink it from a champagne glass. Give it some some respect. You know what I mean? Give it some respect. Um, any last questions? Again, you can go in the Discord server here. Our, our moderators will put that. That's a free server with 24 seven. You can talk about anything you want and we have a section on food and drink. So I'll be posting some of the pictures of the green tea in, uh, in there. Um, yeah, I think we have 10,000, almost 11,000 people in our Discord server now, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Matcha. Um, yeah, you know, matcha has the most caffeine of all of them. I guess there's a difference, but when you brew matcha, uh, when you brew green tea, or when you're actually consuming the particles of the tea, it really increases the amount of caffeine. I'm not sure how, ma how much caffeine is in matcha compared to, compared to this one, which has 900, 960 milligrams of caf uh, catechin, or catechins, catechin, and, and um, that seems like quite a lot, but it's very pure. So I'm not sure how much more matcha has in this, but I, I can tell you this. The first time I drank matcha was um, 22 years ago, and I went to a tea ceremony, and they passed the bowl around, and, and I was the first one. Big mistake. So I took the bowl, and it's a quite a large bowl, because they, they mix it up for the group. And I, I turned it three times, I looked around to make sure I wasn't doing it wrong, and I drank it all. Because I thought she makes it, makes it for, I thought it was just like a mug, I was supposed to drink it all. So I didn't want to do it wrong, so I drank it all. I just kept on gulping and gulping and gulping. And then everyone looked, I, I looked around, everybody looked shocked. Like, why did you just do that? I said, I don't know, I never did the tea ceremony before. Now I know. Don't, when it comes in a big pot, it's for the community. I didn't know, like, because it's kind of nasty because it's like my lips are on it. I didn't want to share, so I just thought I was being polite. Well, the end reaction, um, the end result was that I was so caffeined out, I didn't sleep, I think, for two days. I'm not exaggerating. The next day, I was pretty wired, and the next day, I couldn't sleep, but it might be because I drank something else. I don't know, um, but I, I, I chalk it up to the strength of matcha. If you drink it in 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 a quantity like that, it it will it is more powerful than than energy drinks. I think if you're drinking it, if you're a gamer and you need to be buzzed, matcha man, and it's healthy. All right, just just know that. All right, they don't put chemicals in it because you want to. If you want to live forever, you should be drinking matcha man, not you know those other drinks like what are those big sports the energy drinks? Drink matcha drinks. Just advice from somebody who's, who's uh, you know, living in Japan. That's, that's all it is. <laughs> Chunky Monkey, thank you for the green tea experience and education. You're so welcome, Chunky, Mr. Chunky. Mr. Das would not approve of all this tea drinking. Um, I'm, I'm afraid. All right, I'm gonna take you to a vending machine and just show you some of the, some of the options over there. Um, and then hang out, and if, if you're an insider, come back in about five minutes um, on the Only in Japan Go channel and I'm going to have another live stream eating some um, Kit Kats. It's a top secret live stream only for us. But before that, I will be going to the vending machine. All right, let's do this. Save the community. I'll be back. There's some two beautiful vending machines right over there. Let's go see what they have in there. I once spent about, well, that's what they were doing with the construction. 
I once spent a day looking for Sprite. I couldn't find it. So every single Japanese vending machine has some tea in it. Again, you're seeing like um, the... Hey, there's the flux capacitor. That's the flux capacitor. Why'd they put that on peach? Interesting. Uh, so this is an Asahi drink and they seem to have their own Nihoncha called uh, Nagakata, which is long way, I guess, the long way. And it looks like it has some matcha in there, huh? That's in interesting. All of them say no sugar, and that's right. None of them have sugar in it. I guess they wrote it in English because it's like uh, they didn't need to write that in Japanese because everybody knows that there's no sugar in it, but I guess they need to, get to write that in English for, for tourists that go, Bleh! it's so bitter, what's up with that? And then there's a, a Juroku cha, which is really good popular tea, um, but that's not green tea. All right, on the other side here, what do they got? Oh, here it is. All right, so you can get the... Oh, that's not Itoen. They, like, totally ripped off the label. What? It says Ocha. So this company, Sangria, totally ripped off Itoen's Oicha. This is the same. So they have this one with more katakin in it. Look, it says it has more katakin in it. That's so funny. That's just, like, the same darker color as the Itoen one. So Itoen is the... Is the brand leader and this company totally ripped it off but it's it's so much cheaper it's so much cheaper and this vending machine seems to have uh, a bunch of other good stuff here um this is the first ucc just an interesting side note you see here 1969 they made this um before the 1970 osaka expo it's it's a pretty interesting story this milk coffee coffee in a can came about uh, right before the expo as an innovation here in Japan. So that was the first one and they haven't changed the recipe uh, since. I thought that was interesting. Good job. And there's one more vending machine over there. Let's see what we got here. Those kids are like staring at me. <laughs> They're still staring at me. I didn't do it. It's a foreigner. All right, here's another vending machine. What do they got in here? Oh, wow, okay. Oh, they got that Kyoto one. This one's 130 yen. That's interesting. Um, but I don't see, I see a bunch of other drinks. And I'd say about 10 years ago, you would, you would see, um, you'd, you'd see a lot of choices, but most of them would be, di would be green tea. This one doesn't. So you can see that the time is changing. People don't want just green tea. They're actually, I can leave my stuff there. It's a small neighborhood and no one's gonna take it. Um, all right, here's another one. Wow, okay, so we got the Namachi. Uh, Namacha, this is the one that we tried from Kirin. They're boasting to buy this one because they just come in bigger bottles, all right? And, um, I, you know, again, like Namacha is an easy sell for me. This is a Kirin vending machine. It's one of the favorite ones because it has a very good balance to it. And it's unfiltered, so it makes you feel like you're getting more good stuff in there. But that's not really the case that I know of. I'm not, not a tea master. This one has, this one is cooled off. Um, oh, okay, well, hold on a second. This one is hot, sorry. Atakai, which means that this is actually a hot tea. I think I can... What do you guys think? Should I try this one? I'll try this one. Uh, it's not kid size. When you... When you... I mean, I did, these are a little bit smaller than the pet bottle. But... Heck, it's been, it's been warm for... It'll keep me warm, so I think it's got some value. All right, let's put... Let's get it. Let's put these super chats to good work. Well, I only carry big coins. Oh, there's one. Boom. I was only 100 yen. I didn't need to put the extra ones in there. Oh, it's nice and warm. 
You can see the cap is on there. So maybe this will re release the catechins. Catechins. Nice. All right, let's go back to our, our seat over here. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. That's so warm. I got the change. I got the change. Thanks for looking out for me. No, I got the change. I got the change. It's like 30 yen. Okay, I, I like it on the back here. Again, read the labels on the bottom of it. On the very bottom, it says here that there's um, 0 0.03 grams of table salt and 27 to 56 milligrams of katakin. And that is a lot, actually. So there's some, some really good stuff in here. Iemon, again, I think this is the... No, this, I didn't have this. Oh, I, I think I had this one, just as a different kind. Yeah, this is from Suntory, right? Yeah, Suntory. Yeah. This is the one that I picked for fifth place. <laughs> this is the fifth place one. Let's see. Oh, wow. The thing with cold... Um, the thing with... I, actually, Jim, it says here... Oh, yeah, uh, 30 milligrams, right? 0 0.03 grams. Um, it's actually different when it's, when it's hot. And this is, this is also something that's important. On a summer day, you're gonna want cold green tea. Just it's so much more refreshing than hot tea. But when you get a cup of green tea that, that, that comes like hot, just the aroma of it is so intoxicating. And I like to compare coffee and green tea like this, okay? Uh, coffee is like that chocolate bar, you know? You, you just mentally, I'm always thinking about coffee because it's got that rich chocolate chocolateness to it. Like, like it, it's just good. And this is like vegetables, okay? I, you can't really market this. It's not exciting, but when you do have it and you eat it, it tastes so good. It's got this, and it smells like Japan to me. Plastic tea. Oh. Slight bitterness, no sugar at all. Refreshing, slight bitterness. It's a lot better. You, you can taste more of the flavors when it's not this hot, I think. When it's cold, you can taste more of the flavors because you don't have the heat messing around with the, the insides. But when it starts to cool off, you start to, you start to taste some of the other flavors in it a little bit. This is good and it'll keep you warm. This is fun. All right, thanks so much for watching, everybody. If you have some questions, leave them in the comments below. I encourage you to go check out in the link. There's a link in the description. Uh, check out the video that I just uploaded. Um, we're close to 500 comments, and I do read the comments. If you leave me one that's, that's a question, I will answer it. Um, also, it's interesting to read the other comments in the video because um, there's a lot of people I ask the question, it says, would you make the switch from green tea to coffee? And there's some really interesting points of view on some people that have done that. And, and how they reacted to it was interesting for me to really read. So I appreciate all the feedback. Um, I also wanna tell you about an Easter egg in that video. So if you've already watched it, um, there's a section in it where I'm telling people about the, the amino acids and the katakins in Watanabe's um, Yamadayan tea shop. And inside the music, I go like this, okay? Um, I, I actually was singing in the background and I don't know if anybody picked it up. I go, Sencha. And I pick cookie cha. It's like, yeah, it's really geeky, totally cheesy, complete nerd cringe move. It works. All right, just you might want to rewatch it just to see that it works. I I like the, I like it when there's when there's an Easter egg and there's some cheesiness in a video. Chalk that up to only in Japan. That's my style. There has to be something that makes you smile and something to make you watch it again. There has to be some element to it that that nobody else has the guts to do and that's maybe in that one and the of course the bungee jumping at the end same um thanks to all of our members here i'm gonna go live in about five minutes now to try this one this is um green tea tiramisu and ume ume taste so 
Uh, we'll get a chance to see if these are really good. Just a really short stream for insiders. Um, we call this a secret stream. It's not secret anymore. Um, and yes, I kind of always trying to get more memberships on, on YouTube. So <laughs> you got to plug away. Um, thanks so much for watching. I do have another video on the main channel coming really soon. I'm filming a couple of episodes. One was at Wayno Station um, uh, two days ago. And that was a really interesting uh, shoot that I'm doing there with in collaboration with uh, uh, Japan Rail. Um, and uh, if, you're, if you're traveling in Japan, you're living here in Japan, do check out the JR Welcome Pass. It's not the best time to be traveling, but especially with the state of emergency and telling us not to travel, so John shouldn't be promoting this pass. But if you do and you have to travel, then travel on the JR Welcome Pass. <laughs> like, I don't know the JR East Welcome Pass. I don't know. Uh, that's supposed to be promoting travel. And if you are a YouTuber and you're watching this, please do be safe if you're traveling around YouTubing. You should probably be staying home a little bit, but um, just stay safe and try not to go into crowded places. And for the next uh, week or so, I'll be doing my best to do just that. I'm taking precautions and you stay safe too. See you on the Insider live stream and another live stream either tonight or tomorrow. Um, for the rest of the rest of this month, I'll be doing a live stream every day. Pretty exciting. Thanks so much for the support, everybody. See you in the next next live stream. Later, Gator. I, I never know what to say at the end of the live streams. Join us on the Discord server. Like I don't want to. I don't want to be too pushy with promoting my stuff. So just good night. If you're drinking, if you're going to bed right now, do not drink green tea because you'll stay up. That's my advice. <laughs> Bye.